Good day and welcome to a new video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Hey uh, and welcome today. Today you're joined by uh, me, Daniel, and also I have a guest in today, uh, Rowan Perros. Is that how you say it? Yes, that's right. Awesome. And she's an awesome artist. Um, from at the moment you're in the UK. Um, yes. So, uh, tell me a bit of, about yourself. Okay, um, so I'm originally from India, and that's where I grew up and spent the majority of my years. And I've been an illustrator and a concept artist in the entertainment industry for about three years now. Awesome. Cool. Um, did you study or anything before that? Um, yeah, I, I've actually, uh, I have done my degree in applied art and that was back in India yeah. and, uh, that was a four year course. So I'm mainly focused on advertising, which is not related to what I'm doing right now, yeah. but I majored in illustration. Um, and I think, uh, I, after the course ended, I worked for a while and then I started starting again. So it wasn't like, uh, I took a lot of breaks in between. Hmm. Fair enough. That's so it's like stopping and starting course. Um, no, I mean, I did my degree for four years yeah, and yeah. I started working. I worked for two years after that and. Okay. I basically um, wanted to get into concept art and what I studied in school wasn't really relevant to what I wanted to learn. Hmm. So I kind of had to figure it out along the way and uh, I took a break from working to study in a concept art school and that's where everything started basically. Oh, awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what got you um, interested in doing this, this concept art? Um, it's, it's kind of interesting, actually. I've always thought of myself as something more of an illustrator than a concept artist. So... I, I actually started out as a web designer mm -hmm. uh, right out of college. Yeah. That was that was my first job. Ah. And even even at the time I I knew that was not what I wanted to do, but I mm -hmm. took it anyway just so I could get some working experience and mm -hmm. you know see what it's like working with a team with other people in in a more professional uh, environment. And uh, a year later I switched jobs. I started working as a penciler uh, at a company that produced French comic books. Yeah. So that was kind of like a turning point for me because I realized how weak my drawing skills were. You know, it's it's one thing to pull off a single illustration, but to maintain consistency across 30 pages of a comic book is uh, something else. Mm, so definitely. that's when I knew yeah, that's when I knew I had to go back to studying. Yeah. So uh, after about like two years of working, uh, I realized like, you know, that job could get boring after a while. It, it's not for everyone because you're basically drawing the same characters over and over. And it was too repetitive fair for me. Enough, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's when I took a break mm. and I, I went to the concept art school. I Singapore. Yeah. So I that's that's the year that everything changed for me. Um, I experimented a lot with the kind of stuff I wanted to do. And I tried not to limit myself when it came to learning because you you want to be able to keep up and uh, you know adapt to the art industry as it evolves. And 
that just increases your chances of finding a place to fit in. So I, I basically tried everything. I, I learned a bit of 3D mm -hmm. and then concept design and some world building. And I also worked on my illustration skills at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the projects I did during that one year were really, well, they helped me get my foot in the industry. So I started applying for jobs again and I was uh, lucky enough to get hired at Atom Hop Design, where I've been working for about a year now. <laughs> and yeah, yeah I, I've had the opportunity to work on like well-established projects and it's been a huge learning experience for me. I think <laughs> the studio was a good fit for me because even though I worked as a concept artist, the projects I worked on had a good balance of illustration and concept design. So I, I got to do a bit of both. And that kept things interesting for me because I got to work on a, a variety of projects with you know different styles. It's one of the benefits of working in an outsourcing studio. Mm -hmm. You get to dip your toes in so many different projects. It's it's quite enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically, that's how I got into it. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's great when you have like different kind of things to do. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I certainly because I've I've got a big project at the moment. Um, this children's book I'm working on, and yeah, it's definitely been I think a year, nearly two years making it. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I've had to I've had to kind of stopping and and start it because. I've just either got bored of it, um, I just getting like, um, yeah, a bit out of touch with it and stuff like that. So I've had to have a little side projects or do something else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's not the same characters and everything, and then come right. back to it. You know, it's always it's always good to have that. Um, you know, a little bit of variety in there. Um, yes. You know what you're working. Yeah. Yes, it can be quite uh, challenging. You've got to be committed to uh, working on something for a long time. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's always important to um, kind of make plans if you're mm -hmm. you know stuck on a big project for so long. Um, you know, doing finding other little projects to do on the side. Um, or finding fresh ways to do it, you know, like yeah. um, painting in a different way or, right. um, yeah, just trying things out sometimes, um, a different, you know, process or something, mm -hmm. um, working on something, you know, just change something up. Um, yeah. It's always, it's always fun to do and it, it just keeps you motivated, uh, keeps you going. Um, yeah, that's for sure. And I mean, you always find out that later during the process, I mean, your art style evolves as well. So that, that can be quite uh, inter interesting. Hmm. Definitely. It, it's, it's, it's constantly evolving. <laughs> um, it doesn't stay still. <laughs> Especially, right. you know, starting out or the first few years, you know, it, it, it goes through a lot of changes. Um, mm. But don't yeah. you ever like look back and like you wish you could change things you've already done before? <laughs> uh, definitely, and you know I, I plan to do that as well. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> go back and change a few things here and there for some some things that need like retouching and re-editing. Um, you know, I was just doing this yeah. today. I was just going to because I've got my my old computer. It's got all the old paintings and files um right uh decided to go get them um because i wanted to look at them and see what they're like there are some that i'm looking at you know doing other print work with them and things like that um but you know my previous uh, previous book that i've done um mm -hmm. that i did at course about four or five years ago i think um, oh, wow. 
and I haven't really touched it since. I've been busy doing other stuff, um, you know, doing my own little okay. new projects and things like that. Um, and I've decided to really like bring it out of the out of the um, graveyard again. Um, That's great. I mean, it, it was five years ago, and looking back at it, I'm like, <laughs> oh god, I painted that. That looks. You know, it, it it looks good for what it is, but looking at it now, it's it's like, oh, this is not working at all. Like, I could do yeah. so much better with this, you know. Um, I think if you, if you wait too long, it gets to a point where if you you've improved so much and you're basically just like starting over. Mm, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've got to I'm gonna retouch those pages. So hopefully they'll be awesome to do right i think yeah going looking at old pieces can you can learn a lot from as well definitely yeah. it makes you feel good sometimes like i i often look back at all my old stuff or whenever i feel like you know i'm sort of uh plateauing and not really improving and you don't see these changes like in a short period of time mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, I think the last year I've improved a lot. Um, I'd say more than I think I have like previous years. Uh, That's it's, good. I mean, hmm. it's it's good when you can look at it objectively and you know when you've improved when you compare your old stuff to the stuff you're doing now. It's always important to, to look at that, um, you know, not to give up on it all and just keep going, keep pushing, you know, yes, you, you might, you might create a bad drawing or something or bad painting and be like, um, you know, not that great or not that shabby. Um, mm -hmm. but you can look at back at the achievements, um, and look at it as another challenge, you know, something to, to keep you moving forward as well. Yeah, for sure. It's it's always a, a learning experience. Like even if you fail a couple of times, or basically if things are not going right, you you learn from those mistakes as well. Awesome. Um. So, how is uh, working at a studio like for you? Uh, it was really good. <laughs> I, I I look at. I mean. When I think about uh, the kind of work I enjoy doing, it, it involves a lot of teamwork. And I, I do freelance as well, but that's more of like a side thing. Mm -hmm. So I like working in an environment where, you know, everyone, everyone's pursuing the same goals or everyone's working towards the same thing. You, it sort of motivates you to work harder and it's always great to uh work with a lot of people like on the same project uh and contribute as well um it's definitely a more a structured way of working and you you don't have a lot of freedom i would say hmm. to do things whenever you want to do it and i think uh the deadlines force you to work in a more efficient way and it, it's, it's a. I think it's a faster way to grow, uh, if you work within certain uh, limitations. So there are definitely a lot of challenges uh, working in a team, but you just sort of learn along the way, I guess. Hmm. Definitely, and there, you've got you know some support there as well, which is great. Yes, for um, sure. We're at home. Oh, at freelancing, you don't have as much support, <laughs> or you know, much. It's, yeah, you know. all self uh, motivation. Hmm. Well, just it can be really hard sometimes. <laughs> I I've been through that as well, so I know what that's like. Hmm. It's uh, it's definitely uh, harder <laughs> to be consistent with personal work. It's definitely doable, though. It's um, oh, of course, yes. Yeah, it's 
it's just a another challenge really um yeah. but i mean it's not for everyone some people have to have that kind of you know mm -hmm. uh, you know nine to five kind of thing where they you know go to work and yeah. it's where they're working and then they come home and that's you know that's not when you're working that's when you're kind of relaxing watching tv and stuff Correct. like that um yeah know. i think i'm one of uh, those people and i've sort of figured that out over the years <laughs> hmm. I, i'd say i'm the opposite you know i i um i kind of because I, I, I still work a nine-to-five job per se, you know, to pay the bills and everything. Um, and then after that, I come home <laughs> and, you know, a couple of hours of relaxing and things, you know, having tea and um, family time, getting, mm -hmm. the, getting my kid, my daughter to bed. And then, <laughs> you know, after that, it's straight. Usually, sometimes I do a bit of gaming. Um maybe 20 yeah. minutes or something um sometimes not at all like i'm straight into painting um and i don't stop until like you know it's 11 o'clock um or something right. it's late at night i'm like oh it's just time. oh i'm gonna keep going <laughs> um i think like when you have like a family it's it's not just about uh creating like you mm. know a structured plan it's more about your priorities mm. and what what comes first yeah and what's exactly. most it, important it's important too you know it's important to keep my um family healthy and happy as well um yeah yeah and spending time with them i'm always you know looking at um you know spending time with them um but also mm -hmm. break it down when when i need personal time and when i do need to keep creating as well you know find those boundaries um yeah i guess that's a, a balance that you need to find and i haven't crossed that bridge yet but you know when i get to it <laughs> it's definitely going to be a, a learning curve for me because right now i'm independent so mm. i don't really have to think about all these other things and i can just do what i've i've been doing for the past few years Oh, it's a lucky thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's a challenge. And, um, you know, I've, I've heard from, like, lots of artists, um, like, in listening to, like, YouTubes and things. Um, it's quite interesting to see the, you know, some of these, some of these artists out there that have, like, um, all these other things going on, um, like, two or three kids um oh. you know and other things in their life like dancing or um, mm -hmm. other activities outside of art and illustration um yet they still you know are keeping up with doing a lot of this freelance work <laughs> or studio work um yeah it just blows my mind sometimes <laughs> yeah yeah i know what you mean <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, so I see that you, you draw quite a few females. Um, is this your preferred subject? Uh, yes. I, I prefer drawing females in general. And I don't want to say it's because it's easier. It's definitely not. <laughs> but I do feel more comfortable drawing them. And I can draw male characters if I'm required to, like... I don't always get to choose what I want to draw when I'm at work because, I mean, you have the freedom to choose what you want, want to draw if you're working as a freelancer or if you're just working by yourself. But, you know, in a studio, especially in a concept art studio, you've, you've got to know how to be able to draw a lot of things. Mm. And, and the more versatile you are, the more likely you are to get hired. But so, of course, like in my portfolio, when at the time when I sent it to the company, I had a variety of things and it was not just females. But if it were up to me, yes, I, I do prefer drawing females. It's cool. Is it, um, yeah. I, for me, I like drawing creatures myself. Um, 
I do Interesting. I do um you know dabble here and there in drawing other oh. stuff. <laughs> um you know, I do like lately I've been doing thirty minutes a week of reference drawing. Um, so just grabbing some reference and just drawing that. Um yeah. for at least thirty minutes I... a week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'm not great at creatures. I mean I have tried it a couple of times. <laughs> but I haven't done enough of of them to to say that I can draw them. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> and I would be the same for kind of humans. Um you know, but I have I think I can um get an okay kind of character, <laughs> like humanoid character. Um but and that kind of aspect has still got a lot of learning. Um, right. But yeah, I think it's I, okay, like because you're you're uh, you have you're more focused on what you want to do, and you're just getting better at that thing. So mm. it's not a bad thing. Mm. Yeah. Well, I said um, I was doing the thirty minutes a week, and the reference drawing I'm doing at the moment is of a woman. Um, so I just. I'm drawing her over and over again, um, and this sometimes I can do more than thirty minutes a week. It depends on mm. how my week goes, um, right. yeah, and how things go. If I'm like at the moment, I've got quite a few, you know, um, videos that I can create at the moment. You know, video um, recordings. Right. Um, because, you know, I pre-record a lot of my uh, paintings and then, you know, upload them to YouTube. Um, right. I've seen some of your stuff. It's pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, you know, sometimes it takes me longer for some paintings to record them and stuff. Um, at the moment, I've got a few weeks worth. So, you know, I'm, I'm at a good state where I'm not so rushed. Um, oh, that's good. So these are like 30 minute drawings. Is is it like a habit you're trying to create or is it just something you do when you need to warm up? Um, yeah, it's, it's more a habit because um, I don't seem to draw much or any reference at all. Like, mm -hmm. you know, straight from reference. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when I began drawing I used to draw reference 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 that's all I would right. draw um, but these mm -hmm. days the opposite I don't draw any at all um, well straight from reference you know um, right so I feel like I do I do still need that it's to, to help me learn um, and grow mm. yeah so, I've yeah. seen like a couple of artists <laughs> they usually take a break from what they're working on to go and study the mm. stuff that they want to learn that can be a good habit as well. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's it's a habit that I'd like to do, so um, I make sure that, you know, I'm ticking all the boxes each week. Um, you know, I'm getting a bit of learning time each week. I'm getting a bit of um, painting done each week. Um, mm -hmm. I'm keeping up with whatever else I want to keep up with. You know, it's yeah. just a, just another thing to tick off to make sure that I'm actually progressing. I'm not just kind of just producing and, and keeping up with my YouTube channel. I am progressing in, in my career kind of a thing. Um, yeah. Well, that's good. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, your work's awesome. So I've seen your work on ArtStation. Um Thank you. Uh, look at your 219 folder on ArtStation. And that, was mm -hmm. a, that only has one piece. Is there a reason for this? Uh, yeah, I, I looked into that. It's it's actually because I haven't categorized all of my artwork by mm -hmm. year. I've oh, definitely okay. done more, more pieces <laughs> during that year. But they won't show up in the folder because they don't have the 2019 tag. Oh, okay. But I have removed a couple of pieces from 2018 yeah and there's a reason for that is it's they're mostly my school projects and mm -hmm. it's not because i think they're not good anymore it's just that content wise 
uh, I'm trying to keep my ArtStation page more updated and relevant to my current interests. So I'm constantly uh, taking pieces out and or adding stuff. Uh, yeah. Awesome. That's cool. Um, you know, I feel like I can be the same with my art station a little bit, but yeah, you know, I'm mm -hmm. changing it a wee bit here and there. I still have kind of kind of sub folders that have some of the other less right um less more important stuff, I guess. Um, like you know, I've got Inktober there, um, and and things like that. Um, whereas somewhere like Instagram or I think even DeviantArt. Um, oh, I haven't I, heard that name in a while. <laughs> um, I haven't used it in a while, but yeah, at those kind of places, I I would I'm more confident sharing a lot of stuff, um, mm. like just random bits here and there, you know, not so polished. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot more. Uh, I would say casual, if that's the word. Compared to like art station, where you you feel like you need to always uh, upload like high quality stuff. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. I had a Deviant Art account, but I just don't update it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got all my old work, yeah. all my old anime work. <laughs> <laughs> That's how um, everyone starts out. <laughs> Definitely, I haven't. I don't think I've uploaded anything in probably a year and a half. I think. Um, yeah. Is is that is is why is that? It's just I I haven't I really wanted to post anything on DVD okay. at the moment. Um, okay. I just uh, I decided one day I was not gonna post m anything more on DVD because it wasn't really. Um, I wasn't gonna waste much more time on it, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah. I re yeah, it's definitely. I s it's still there, but it's kind of it is kind of a dying site in a way. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. I mean, it works for some people, and there are the. It looks like they're doing some pretty cool stuff on there at the moment. Um, yeah, yeah. Like I've seen. I visited it every once in a while, and. Mm. There's some, uh, yeah, the audience is a lot more, I think, younger, and it's more like for hobbyists now. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I see, I'd say, kind of a lot more different things on there than I would on Art Station, you know, and um, it's not the kind of thing I would post, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, are you a goal setter? Um, yes. I I usually uh set out my goals for like the next couple of years. <laughs> hmm. Um, and it's like I try to follow it. Uh, you know, it's. It's, while it's not set in stone, things, you know, keep evolving and things keep happening. But I always try to have the main goals in focus and I constantly try to work towards them. Whatever I do and whatever decision I make is uh, based on how it's going to affect uh, that goal. Ah, awesome. Oh. Um, yeah, for me, I do set goals as well, usually. Um, I go by year, usually. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I do have bigger goals. <laughs> okay. Um. So more like, uh, short-term goals that yeah. you keep working towards. Okay. Yeah, Try. I try to, um, I think one year, last year, I decided to give myself more um, short-term goals because, you know, I was 
doing just a whole year goal, like um, try to make they had a goal like try to make so many videos in a year, um, <laughs> and some other some other ones, and I didn't. I think throughout the year I didn't have enough little things to do, um, or to keep me motivated mm. per se. Um, right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think like it, it's good to have uh, short-term goals as well. Um, but uh, I, in my case, that it doesn't really things don't really happen <laughs> that fast. And, like you know, it, it takes a long time to get to where you want to be and uh, I don't have any immediate career related goals I would say because I'm already working towards the long term goals I've set for the next couple of years mm. so I'm just focusing on like being consistent with the quality of my work and also improving this my skills so I can reach them in the long run. Awesome. Um, so what goals have you accomplished slash achieved? Um, it, getting into the industry itself was a pretty big goal I managed to achieve. I'd say like you know, I never really imagined I would make it this far. <laughs> it still feels unreal when I look back at it now. And as a result of it, you know, I I have a pretty stable income because I have a full-time job. So I would consider that to be an accomplishment. Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty big. I mean, that's one of my big ambitions at the moment, um, kind of goals, is to find a job that's creative, <laughs> a full-time job. Right. Um, and stable as well. Yeah. And, it and can stable. be hard. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, at the yeah. moment with, you know, what's going on, um, it's it's getting harder to find a stable job. Um, I'm, I'm lucky at the moment here in New Zealand. Um, mm -hmm. that I've had, you know, a, a stable income, um, so I don't have to worry so much about, um, you know, not having enough to spend this week on, um, you know, food or, or something like that, you know, food versus rent. I don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure how... Um, the situation has affected freelance artists, hmm. but I'm I'm sure it's it that's going to be a challenge as well to have like clients coming in regularly. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I I wouldn't know either. You know, <laughs> I guess because you know the economy is down, um, mm -hmm. there would have also I've heard like. You know, blockbusters and and movies and things like that. Um, yeah, has gone down. I don't know about gaming. I haven't heard about it. Um, I don't know much about that either. <laughs> um, I try to like stay away from the news. It's it's not. Hmm. It <laughs> can be very depressing. Yeah, yeah, it it, it can be. Um, I I try and look on the bright side of it <laughs> as much as I can as well yeah um yeah and, and stay away from the negative as much as I can as well um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and yeah I think way. going forward it's going to be it's going to be interesting that's for sure <laughs> yeah I think um you know there are some kind of outcomes with this this whole situation um you know that we'll find new ways to innovate you know there'll be yeah. a lot of i think there'll probably be a lot of more people going online working um right you know. yeah we're fortunate enough to be in 
uh, like have jobs that where we can just work from home. Mm. So that's a good thing. Yeah. So remote working is not really an issue. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Um. A lot of places are, you know, realizing that remote working isn't an issue these days. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of um, companies and things are. There's obviously still quite a few different things that can't operate. Yeah. Than, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like, you know, studios, um, dealing with so many people, um, might be an issue if, you know, all different homes, different time zones, um, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, management can, can be, uh, I, I guess, I, I, I don't know much about that side of production, but it, it must be quite difficult as well. But, I mean, if you get people, like, working for studios that, you know, all work at the same time, um, it could work, you know? Oh, you mean, like, within the same country, or...? Well, even different countries, you know? Um, if they worked, per se, at the same time. I've seen that on some, um, you know, job posts on, like, ArtStation and, and things like that, that they've said, oh, we work between... You know these hours between 9 a.m. um 5 p.m. right yeah you know, UK time or um US time or whatever it is um and it's, right. it's good to kind of be prepared for that you know um mm -hmm. if you get into that situation of freelancing for a certain studio if you are yeah. you know required to work for them between these hours um, yeah, you get you have to adjust your mm. uh, schedule according accordingly. Mm. Yeah, and that's with life too. You got to keep adjusting it. <laughs> um, you know, things come up. And, yeah, situations are kind of unpredictable. <laughs> you, you never know what's going to happen. You just got to be prepared, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, what's your favorite social media to use? Uh, when it comes to like choosing a, a a platform to showcase my work, I think I think it depends on what I want to get out of it. Mm. Um, I would say I'm more active on Instagram, and that's because I can engage with the people on a more personal level. And uh, it's it's a great place to like show people your other side, like you know your personality, and that kind of uh, casual engagement gives your followers like a sense of who you are, and not just as an artist, but also as a person. Mm. And also, like with Instagram, I don't I don't feel the need, or I don't feel pressured to put out these highly rendered and finished artworks but it's not the only uh social media i use i also have like an art station but when it comes to that it's for a more professional audience mm -hmm. most of the clients i've worked with over the past year or two have reached out to me through my art station page mm -hmm. so i kind of treat that as more of an online portfolio and i guess at the end of the day no matter what pr platform it is it's it's just another opportunity or avenue for you to grow as an artist whether it's just for uh, meeting people making connections or for uh growing your business definitely yeah i've tried quite a few social medias in my time um mm -hmm. Like this one called Naomi. Um, Never heard of that. Yeah, it, it it kind of came in and went, um, kind of thing. I think I found it through Facebook or something. Um, How long ago was this? Two or three years ago. Um, I was oh, trying okay. a few okay. things. It it was like a blogging platform, um, and eventually, you know. 
you, you could earn like money from views kind of a thing from it um you know i walked away with ten dollars from it but um and uh you know if, if a little bit kind of of an audience i guess from doing it um but it was something to try you know and it, it um i think worked out okay so did it just like <laughs> So hours, or why didn't that work out? Or um, why did you move on from it? I guess it was kind of the money kind of thing. Okay. Because <laughs> um, okay. I stopped doing the whole, you know, money for views thing. Um, but then it seemed like there was like less traction uh, when that happened, kind of a thing. So, you know, um, I guess it's to do with their advertisement thing. And but I, I just guess. Um, I wanted to try something else and I tried it um, and also because I was doing this every day kind of a thing um, I was realizing that I didn't I didn't want to keep going with it because I've got other things to do um, that are mm -hmm. more important than working on this blog every day um, right I, I think it was like with me it's like I'm not very active on social media it's just that at, at a certain point, like I would make more um, a bigger effort to update it, like if I'm looking for jobs or something like that. But I do update it every now and then. It's not like a. It's. I I don't really put in a lot of my energy into it. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I I I dabble i guess <laughs> um but i think with instagram now i'm posting kind of every day um but that's just posting my uh four weekly drawings mm -hmm. um, something that i've painted in the week and then uh, thumbnails of my youtube channel so it's not very it's right. not very hard to do basically um yeah, do not... you do you upload as you finish or do you plan what you're going to upload say in the next couple of weeks or uh, how, how, what's of, it like for you uh, yeah i kind of plan as i finish kind of a thing um, okay yeah <laughs> there is a per se a schedule you know um the f four days of me posting the the day those daily drawings um mm -hmm. And then, yeah, painting of the week, um, and right. uh, and two different YouTube video thumbnails that I post, um, right? That are from previous weeks. Um, but yeah, um, I got two questions to finish us off, eh? Um, okay. what, what do you hope to achieve before twenty twenty one? Uh, well, I do plan on opening a Patreon account <laughs> sometime, sometime in the future. Well, I'm not sure if it's going to happen by next next year, but it's just something I would like to work on on this side. You know, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, having a full-time job is great, but I feel like my personal work suffers a lot because of it. And I, I don't want to lose touch with that. So I, I feel like in the long run, maybe something like this would motivate me to commit to producing personal artwork consistently. And it, it also, it would be an added source of income at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Awesome. And um, what was, you know, something valuable um, that you have learned that's helped you in your artistic journey? Networking. Mm -hmm. I I have, I mean, uh, I've gone out of my way to create networking opportunities for myself, in at least in the past two years. And, and that's really influenced my uh, artistic growth. I've met so many amazing people who've who've helped me grow as an artist and as a person and 
it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to do because uh, I'm kind of introverted and it takes a lot of confidence to put yourself out there. And it just made me realize, you know, you, we've got an amazing art community. You just need to get involved. So, yeah, I went to uh, conventions and art events and it, like conventions aren't the best place to get you know your portfolio reviewed and stuff but there are, there are other ways of going uh, about about it but in general like uh showing my work to uh, the people who were hiring and it, it it was a good way to uh see like where i stood uh and the feedback i've i've received from artists i looked up to it definitely played a big part in my improvement and i guess looking back at it now i think i think that the the constant encouragement and and support i've received from other artists is is one of the main things that helped me grow mm. yeah it, it it's great to you know connect with other artists and um, you know, get to to learn who these other people are out in the world. Yeah, who like to do what you do. You know. Um, yeah, everyone has shares very similar experiences, and and they're always ready to help. Awesome. Well, you know, thanks for coming into the chat. It's been it's been great. Um, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. It's been really nice. Awesome. Um, yeah, thanks everyone who maybe checked us out, um, whether you would have seen it on Twitch or YouTube, um, feel free, you know, to, to like, feel free to comment down below if you like the video, um, or subscribe. Um, hopefully you check out Rowan Apero's work, um, and hopefully one day she might have a Patreon you can support. <laughs> um. <laughs> So yeah, thank, um, thanks everyone, and yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Right, bye bye.